So when we were talking about the TCA cycle, there was that time where we were pointing out the fact that there's decarboxylation reactions that happen and the TCA cycle will give carbon dioxide as a byproduct and will just get rid of those carbons. Yes, there are those um, anaplerotic reactions that can go ahead and use that carbon dioxide to feed back into the TCA cycle, but if everything's running as normal, they'll just get rid of those. The thing is, is that there's organisms that use acetate as their sole carbon source. Acetate only has two carbons in it, and so these are organisms that are in a more stripped down kind of environment. They can't afford to lose any of the carbons that they have. So those organisms need to hang on to all the carbon they've got. So this acetate-based growth uh, isn't possible with a TCA cycle. Uh, they basically need to be much more efficient with their carbons. So the glyoxylate cycle is going to offer a solution for plants and some bacteria and algae that have that, that acetate-based growth. If you ever come across a bacteria that has acetavorins as part of its name, um, realize that that literally means uh, acetate eating. So acetavorins, literally acetate eating, voracious for acetate. So in this case, because they're running off of a lot of acetate, the carbon dioxide evolving steps are going to be bypassed and an extra acetate utilized. We're going to, in order to do this, we're going to add two more enzymes, uh, isocitrate lyase and malate synthase. So if you're just looking at the glyoxylate cycle, this is what it looks like all by itself. So notice that we're still using some of the pathway from the TCA cycle. So we're still taking oxaloacetate to citrate, citrate to isocitrate. We keep all of those. We also keep the enzyme that goes from malate to oxaloacetate. So we're keeping some of those steps in there. But then again, we need to get rid of any of the ones that would have caused uh, us to produce carbon dioxide. So the way I usually actually think about this, while I do like this picture, because it shows the glyoxylate cycle as a cycle in and of itself, I also like to bring this back to the TCA cycle. So when I'm thinking about this, I'm usually thinking like, okay, so we still have citrate synthase and we still have aconitase, but then we're going to skip once we have citrate to isocitrate with aconitase, we're going to take two other enzymes to basically skip over from isocitrate to malate, but we're going to keep again that malate dehydrogenase to go to oxaloacetate. So we're basically going to be ignoring all of those other steps. So this to me is a kind of a slightly better picture of the glyoxylate pathway just because it better demonstrates the portions of the TCA cycle that we get to keep. So those two other enzymes that we need, we need an isocitrate lyase, which is going to give us glyoxylate and succinate. Don't worry, that succinate is going to go off and do other things in the cell. We're not just going to ditch it. Remember, remember, the purpose of this pathway is to keep all the carbons. That isocitrate ly lyase catalyzes an aldo cleavage and is very similar to the aldolase reaction in glycolysis because we are essentially cutting uh, this carbon unit. The other enzyme we get is malate synthase. This is going to do a clausion condensation of acetyl-CoA and the aldehyde group uh, to get malate from this. So we basically are going to be combining these two, two carbon units with the help of acetyl-CoA. Uh, and this is going to have that classic CoA chemistry. If you're curious about this mechanism, you can look back at that citrate synthase because it's more of that acetyl-CoA chemistry. Since this is a specialized pathway, it happens in plants, some bacteria, some algae, but realize that this does happen a lot of times in plants because you have that time when the plant is growing from seed and it's not taking in any extra nutrients for a little while. It's just got to grow inside of that seed all by itself. It's very helpful for when plants grow in the dark. Um, so seeds do have a fairly good store of fatty acids, which is where those seeds can get the acetate from. So until those plants get to see the sun and actually begin photosynthesis, it's got to grow using only the stores that it has. And it's going to grow using that glyoxylate cycle. So plants therefore have glyoxosomes uh, to help with all of those mechanisms. But glyoxosomes don't actually have all the enzymes they need. So you're going to have this specialized pathway that's actually coupled from the glyoxosome to the mitochondria because you're going to need enzymes in the mitochondria the succinate dehydrogenase, the fumarase, and the malate dehydrogenase that are in the mitochondria to make all of this work. So this pathway is actually intimately connected between these two organelles.